Good morning. So I was about to go and just jump in the shower. I literally just woke up and I had um, a hot oil treatment in my hair overnight, but I just noticed that I started to get eczema again. So we got to stop that and we got to get rid of it. Yeah. And I'm going to show you how. Hello, beautiful people at the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. I'm someone who's dealt with eczema since I was a child, and recently I did have a flare-up. In today's video, I'm sharing with you guys some of the products and tips that I use to help me deal with my eczema, as well as clear the hyperpigmentation left behind. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Lakeisha, and on this channel I post a lot of skincare, makeup, lifestyle, and hair related videos. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then make sure you are subscribed. And without further ado, let's get started. What is eczema? Atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema, is a skincare condition that typically presents as red, itchy, and dry skin. For people with darker skin tones, you may see this as a blue or purplish tint to your skin, accompanied by the dryness and the itchiness as well. Eczema is very common amongst young children, but it can definitely appear at any age. The reason being is because there is no actual cure for it, and it can be chronic or long-lasting, giving you flare-ups later down the road periodically. In extreme cases of eczema, the skin can also become inflamed and actually start to blister. And then when you itch at it is the worst that it's going to be. Most of you who watch my channel know that from the chin up, I have very oily combination, acne prone, sensitive skin. That's a mouthful. But below my neck, my skin is incredibly dry. So dry to the point where in the winter sometimes if I'm wearing jeans, at the end of the day when I take them off, I have scales of my skin falling off in my jeans. It's it's not a pretty picture. Even more than that, when I was little, I had extremely sensitive skin and I would have breakouts and flare ups to almost anything that came in contact with my skin. When my eczema was really, really bad, it would be in this area right here in the crevice of my arms on both sides. I would get it on my neck, sometimes on my face as well. That's the reason why the, the ring around my mouth is so dark because it was eczema that I kept itching at. Um, I had eczema behind my back as well and all over my legs. So it definitely wasn't the funnest time to experience. And this is also why in the majority of my videos you'll hear me talking about my relationship with fragrance and I don't enjoy really highly fragrant products because it tends to irritate my skin to the point where I have flare-ups of eczema. When I had really bad flare-ups as a child what I found most effective was cortisol creams but if you use them for too long, too much, your skin can become dependent on them. And when you stop using them, you'll go through a sort of withdrawal. And I went through a little bit of that when I was little, and that's why I no longer use cortisol creams to help me manage my eczema. Here are some of the tips that I have for dealing with eczema. The first recommendation, of course, is to double check all of the products that you're using on your skin. Anything with fragrance, potentially irritating ingredients, you definitely need to stop using them. So this means laundry detergents. This means any fragrances that you put on your body, as well as any body care or skincare that you're using as well. These can be very irritating, especially if they have those ingredients. They really quickly seep into the skin. And as eczema is a skin condition, you want to be very concerned about what you're putting on your body. If you have really beautiful, luxury bubble baths and so on and so forth, just put them aside while you're going through your flare. As an adult, your eczema may not be constant, but rather it may be chronic, so it appears in random flare-ups. So you can still use your bubble baths, just make sure that while you are experiencing that, you put those things away. This ties into the second thing you want to do, and that is get a very gentle, simple body wash. The one that I found really works for me is the Aveeno Restorative Skin Therapy. This is their soothing body wash. This one actually features collateral um, oatmeal, aloe, and pro-vitamin B5. I'm sure I did not pronounce that properly, but anyways, I am a cat lover and I love to run. It is, of course, fragrant free. So this is a very soothing body wash. It doesn't really foam up like a lot of those soaps really do, but I do find it cleans your skin very well without stripping of any um, 
of those natural oils that you do need for your skin to thrive. I found this one really works for me and it has also helped me deal with my body acne as well because acne is a skin condition, it's inflamed skin. So this has been very helpful for both of those things. The next thing I recommend is adding oatmeal into your routine. Now whether you're doing a oatmeal bath or an oatmeal mask, it's great to get the benefits of this ingredient. Oatmeal has amazing calming ingredients and it's very hydrating and moisturizing to the skin. So it's very helpful for people who suffer from eczema or dry skin in general. What I do is I actually just get oatmeal. This is from the natural whole foods I can't say that word, Whole Foods store. <laughs> and I ground it up in a blender to actually get oatmeal powder. So with this, I would pour it into my bath with some Epsom salt, and it really helps if you have flare-ups kind of everywhere. Now, if you don't have time to do a full bone bath, then you can definitely spot treat by using an oatmeal mask. So mixing this with water or aloe vera, your choice, you can just apply it onto the spot and treat it like a, a mask. You know, it's fun to do masks on your face, but you can definitely do masks on your body. And oatmeal is one of those amazing ingredients that if you do suffer from eczema, it's really helpful. And if you do just, you know, want to do an oatmeal mask too, this will be great as well. And it really helps that it smells amazing. Once you're out of the shower, it's extremely important to jumpstart that moisturization on your body. What I found very helpful for retaining that hydration and moisture into the skin after a really nice warm shower, not too hot because you don't want to dry out the skin, but a nice warm shower is to not dry off my body. So I would step out of the shower, I would literally just stand on the mat. Sometimes I'll dry off my feet but not my body. So while my skin is still wet, I will go in with an oil. This is the jojoba oil. It is a light oil and I love using this for pretty much all purpose. It is kind of a more expensive oil, but it is the one that is closer, to, it's closest to the sebum that your skin actually produces. So whether it's your scalp, your skin, your face, or your body, they're all skin, but anyways. So I would step out of the shower and I put the oil on my body, then I will go ahead and do my skincare and brush my teeth, whatever my evening routine entails. And during this time, the oil in the water is absorbing into the skin. So that way, when I'm ready to moisturize, I'm moisturizing damp skin. Just like I moisturize my damp skin on my face, you can do the same with your body. So that is more for overall body in terms of a preventative measure. But what I found really helpful for treating the breakout that I had on my neck was the little Herbs Co. This is their flower bomb oil. This is a black owned brand and it was created by an individual who had a child who experienced eczema as well. And so in order to combat that, they created these products and these oils to help deal with it. And I was super excited to try this out. It has a bunch of flowers as you can see in the inside. So it's really nice. It's really herbal. It is a little bit more on the pricey side. I'm Assuming because of COVID, you know, prices go up. It's a small brand. I do want to support my small businesses. And so I tried this and I absolutely love it. I've had it for almost like five months now and it's like not even halfway done. I only have ever used it on this area too. So um, I don't use a lot of it, but it smells amazing. And it's just a really nice herbal blend. And that has really helped me with that area on my neck to calm down the area. The next thing you want to do is get a very nice calming moisturizer to last in all of that hydration that you just put in your skin. So what I use is the Ultra Repair Cream from First Aid Beauty. This is their intense hydration for dry, parched skin. This one actually does feature that colloidal, I don't know how to pronounce that, the oatmeal <laughs> as well. So it's very, very soothing to the skin. It's gonna be extremely moisturizing and calming and that's the one of the reasons why I love this. I don't love it for my face, but I do love it for the eczema on my body. As we mentioned before, if you are experiencing eczema, it's extremely important to not apply actives on your skin. Your skin's already irritated, it's already inflamed. The last thing you wanna do is put an exfoliator on top of that. So if you have retinol, vitamin C, any of those actives, AHAs, BHAs, just stop <laughs> on that area and wait until it's done. So once the eczema around my neck subsided this time around, I was left with a dark patch. You know, brown skin tends to get dark spots when the acne is gone and it will definitely be behind a dark spot when the eczema is gone. You want to use a gentle skin brightener 
Niacinamide is of course one of the best ingredients that you can use on your skin for overall skin health as well as pigmentation. Um, it's one of my favorite ingredients, but I know that for a lot of people it can be a little bit irritating to the skin. Some alternatives for ingredients that can be very helpful for fading pigmentation left behind by eczema happen to be alpha arbutin. Alpha arbutin is the gold standard second only to hydroquinone, which is a powerful skin lightener but tends to be very irritating especially to darker skin. Its cousin, alpha arbutin, does pretty much the same thing without the negative side effects. This is a really great ingredient. This is one from The Ordinary. It's their 2% anhydrinic acid. Very beautiful on the skin. I don't have any irritation with this at all and there's no sticky feeling because I know that the niacinamide from The Ordinary tends to leave a very sticky, tacky feeling. There's none of that with this. The second really great ingredient would be azelaic acid. This is a beautiful product that not only fades pigmentation and brightens the skin, but it also exfoliates the skin at the same same time so this will help to gradually lighten that area. This is the one from Naturium. This one was gifted to me. This is their new azelaic acid emulsion 10% and I have found this very helpful at fading that pigmentation left behind. This is the one that I did use for this pigmentation on my neck. I think I've been using this product for about a month now. I really do enjoy the texture, the consistency is really nice, it soaks into the skin and doesn't leave any oiliness behind, so it's something I found very helpful. And this is the product that I did use when I was experiencing that um, flare up. I hope you guys learned a little bit about some of the ways that you can help manage your eczema. Comment down below and let me know, do you have eczema? Do you know someone who has eczema? And what tips and tricks do you have to help you deal with it? I would love to know. Remember to click over here to see some of my previous videos, and as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I will see you lovely ladies and gents in the next video. Bye!